If you really hate the way that your webcam looks in your Mac, then this app will definitely help you. Let's get started. What is up guys, this is Max Square, and in this video we're taking a look at an app that will help you customize your webcam settings. Now unfortunately this app is not free, it's going to cost you about $8, but in my opinion it's worth it because if you're comparing it to buying a full on webcam, those usually cost around 80, 100, sometimes 200 bucks. And yes, while the quality may be better, you can accomplish a lot by just changing these settings. So let's jump into it. So this app is creatively named Webcam Settings. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. And once you've installed it, it's pretty much just a panel of various settings. Now they don't actually include a webcam picture, so you can't actually see what you're doing live. So the way I fix this is by just opening up Photo Booth and then pulling that up next to it. So if I set this to auto, you can see it doesn't look too bad. It is a little overexposed, but you can also notice that the motion is a little bit blurry. There's kind of some weird motion blur happening. So the first thing you want to do is just switch this to manual. That's going to be the biggest difference by far. And what you'll notice is if we increase the exposure time, that's going to let a lot more light in, which means that you're going to get a lot more motion blur. And obviously this just looks terrible. So what I would recommend doing is bringing this down as low as possible. You can pretty much go all the way down and you can see that the motion blur is a lot better now. That's one setting. The second thing I would do is just adjust the aperture to compensate for a low exposure. So if the exposure is all the way down, you want to increase the aperture a little bit more. But I would try and get the exposure at a point where it's getting some really natural motion blur, but it's not too dark. And so I usually set that around there and I'll leave the aperture around 15. Now brightness, contrast, and hue is really up to the setting and the lighting in your room. Now I have some pretty decent lighting. I've got a lot of natural light coming in and I have this studio light there which you can see just about there. And so you'll have to adjust this as needed and I would recommend trying to use as much natural light as possible if you're recording in the day or you know conference calling, whatever you're doing. And so these colors are already looking pretty decent because like I said, I have some pretty good lighting. But let's say that it was just really purple or something, you, of course you could adjust the hue. You don't want to go all the way over, that's just going to look super weird. But you can just go a little bit over to the left or right and adjust that as needed. And the contrast is really nice if you want to try and eliminate the background a little bit. But it's also going to make the blacks a lot more black and of course the whites are going to be a lot richer. So I like to leave this around in the middle. And I would try and keep the brightness pretty low because it kind of gives this faded look the higher you go. And so really these settings I like to just leave as they are. What you definitely want to do is look at the white balance. Now this is what's actually going to control what colors are what from the camera's viewpoint because obviously it doesn't know what blue is, it doesn't know what red and white and all those colors are. So if I went all the way to the left, obviously everything's really blue. If I went all the way to the right, everything is a little bit yellow, but that looks fairly natural. So you want to kind of stay toward the right because that's where most skin tones are from any color but you want to kind of stay on that side. But now what's funny is that this light right here is actually white in real life, but it's looking kind of pink. So you just kind of have to mess around with it until you get everything looking pretty good. But of course the main focus is seeing your face. So you want to make sure that looks as natural as possible. And then once you're done, all you have to do is just hit save in your profile. You can give it a name, Luke's custom preset, hit save. And then what you can do is say load at start. And what that means is anytime you open up the webcam settings app, it's gonna load that preset. And anytime you open photo booth, you'll have those settings ready to go. So just to give you a quick comparison, we had it on auto. You can see the motion blur is a little bit weird. Everything's a little bit bright. And then as soon as we go to my custom preset, everything looks a lot more natural. So as you can see, the quality of the webcam now looks a lot better. Now it's not a full on replacement by any means from buying an actual you know, HD or 4K webcam, but it can do a lot for the average user who doesn't want to spend a ton of money. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If so, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.